Okay, so in this video, we're going to be talking about colligative properties and what they are. So colligative properties are properties that depend on the number of solute particles present and not necessarily the identity of those solute particles. The colligative properties are vapor pressure lowering, boiling point elevation, melting point depression, and osmotic pressure. So we're going to be looking at all four of these in this video. The first one is vapor pressure. And the first thing we need to do is understand what vapor pressure is. Vapor pressure is the pressure of the gas that is above the surface of the liquid. And so what we see in the first beaker here is just the pure solvent by itself. So the solvent itself has its own vapor pressure to begin with. And that vapor pressure is dependent on the, the temperature of the of the system in this case we'll just assume it's 25 degrees celsius now your textbook will will show a table that's either in the chapter or it's in the appendix of the vapor pressure of water at various temperatures so typically if it's not given to you temperature you just assume that it's 25 degrees celsius now what's important is is that at that temperature you have a certain amount of gases that are above the surface of the liquid and those gases that are above the liquid are what make up the vapor pressure for that substance in this case water now what happens is when you put in a solute now the solute being sodium chloride or glucose or whatever that dissolves into it there those solute particles are, particles are going to have interactions with the solvent particles and as a result they're going to cause the vapor pressure itself to lower by some fraction. And so uh, this is going to be what we use Routes Law for. And we're going to talk about Routes Law in just a couple minutes in this video. But uh, the, the, what's important to understand is that, or the, the, the intermolecular forces that, that are at play within the solute and solvent particles are what causes the vapor pressure to go down for the pure solvent. Now, we talked about concentration units before and we talked about mole fraction this is one of those cases where we're focusing on the solvent not the solute and so we we looking at Routes law here where we have the pressure of the solvent is equal to the mole fraction of the solvent times the pressure of the solvent initially so in this this symbol here is called the not symbol K N O T and this symbol just means that you that's your normal pressure for that solvent. So in this case A is not anything. A is actually representing the solvent and in most cases it's going to be water acting as your solvent. So uh, to work a problem what you're going to have to do is you're going to be given specific information. Uh, you're going to have the the moles of, of the solvent and the moles of solute and you'll figure out the, the the mole fraction of the solvent so if you want to take for example we want to figure out the mole fraction of water because water is a solvent so we would need the moles of water and we divide it by the moles of the of everything so the total moles in this case so we would take that information calculate the mole fraction and then we would look up in the textbook what the vapor pressure was at that temperature whatever that temperature may be we multiply them together you end up with the vapor pressure of the solution and so uh, again the if you've done this correctly what you should end up with is a lower vapor pressure now the question is uh, how much lower is it going to be and that really depends on the mole fraction itself and so the mo the smaller the mole fraction the the more drastic the change is going to between the the vapor pressure initially to the vapor pressure after the addition of the solute but that's what routes law is used for is used for calculating the vapor pressure of the solvent uh, with the addition of the solute Again, that note there is important. Just make sure you're working with the solvent, 
not the solute. You're going to use the solute in the total moles, but that's the only place you're going to use the solute in this particular equation. Just some problems you can work on just based off the previous uh, the video that I posted with the concentration units. Look at the property. So that, look before I move on, let's just look at this picture for a second here. All right, radiator fluid. This is what you put in your radiator. Antifreeze. What's the antifreeze do? It keeps it from freezing. It's called antifreeze. If you go outside and you have pure water, the water is going to freeze at zero degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So you don't want that happening in your engine and your car. What will happen is it will split the engine apart or pop out the freeze plugs. So what you do is you add antifreeze. Usually it's 50-50 mix, 50-50, 50% antifreeze and 50% water. And by doing that, what you end up happening is you cause the physical properties of water to change. And so the, the properties that we're talking about are boiling point and freezing point. So the boiling point is going to go up and the freezing point is going to go down. That's why I call it the freezing point depression. So this is the phase diagram. We talked about phase diagrams in the, in the previous chapter. But what you see here are the black line. The black line represents the, the normal boiling point and freezing point for water. But when you add in a specific amount of solute, and that's going back to molality we talked about in the previous video of concentration, molality, is the molality changes, you're going to alter the physical properties. And so what you see here is the the expansion of the phase diagram and, and expansion of the liquid phase specifically so you're lowering the freezing point but you're also increasing the boiling point by some factor so so the change in the boiling point is going to be based off this equation here delta t sub b is equal to kb times m uh, kb is the molal uh, boiling point constant and that is dependent on the substance you're dealing with, whatever solvent that is. Again, you use solvents are typically going to be water. Uh, we could use any of these other four solvents that is in the table. Uh, so, but you know, for right now, simplicity, keeping it simple, we want to use water. So KB would be 0.51 degrees Celsius per molal for water. The other thing you have to pay attention to is the molality of the of the solution. And remember that molality is moles of solute per kilograms of solvent. Now we can utilize this equation to solve for several different things, but the main thing that we are interested in right now is the delta T because del the delta T is representing how much of a change it's going to be with relation to the normal boiling point for that substance. In this case, water's boiling point, you can see in the table, is 100 degrees Celsius. And so if we have a certain amount, say, let's say the molality was 0.2, okay? So we want to figure out what the, the new boiling point for water would be. We would take delta T is equal to 0.51, and we we'll multiply that by 0.2 uh, molal. All right, so this is going to be a degree Celsius for molal. So the molal to cancel is, this cancel out, and it leaves you with degree Celsius. So... Uh, that's roughly going to be what 0.1. So let's see. So we got 0.51 times 0.2. It gives you what point. So delta T would be equal to 0 0.102 degrees Celsius. Now, what does that mean? So that means that we have a change of temperature by that margin. Now the boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius, but since we're dealing with boiling point elevation, the new boiling point of water would be 100 plus 0 0.102, which would give me 100.102 degrees Celsius. That, that would be the new boiling point for water. And, it, and if we say we know to go up because it's elevation, because, and that just means that you're adding on. You're adding to the boiling point uh, of water. Now, if you were dealing with freezing point, you'd be going down. You'd be subtracting from that. Freezing point... Uh, depression utilizes the same equation. The only difference is you're using case of F versus case of B. The, the letters represent whether you're dealing with boiling point or freezing point. 
and there's a different constant for case of F. So if you look at water in the table, you'll see that Kf is 1.86 degrees Celsius per molar. And the problems work the same way. It's, it's just depending on the substance that you're working with, you know, and what solvent you're working with, and the overall molality of the solution. So uh, we could work on a problem. I'm just going to uh, blurt it out here. Just pay attention to what I'm saying. If you want to write this down, it would be a good time to pause the video as I, as, I, as I state the problem. So a solution was prepared by dissolving 18.00 grams glucose and 150.00 grams of water. The resulting solution was found to have a boiling point of 100.34 degrees Celsius. Calculate the molar mass of glucose. Now, in order to do this problem, what we need to do is pay attention to what we have. We're given 18 grams of glucose and 150 grams of water. The resulting solution found the boiling point to be 100.34. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to figure out what the delta T is. Now the boiling point of water was 100, so subtracting 100.34 from the 100, we're going to get a delta T equal to 0 0.34 degrees Celsius. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to take the information given to us. We want to calculate the molar mass of glucose. Now, we don't know the formula of glucose, so we can't just assume we know it. What we're going to do is we're going to have to calculate this. So we're going to utilize the equation that we had on the previous slide. Uh, the constant is going to be using case of B here. So we had delta T is 0 0.34 degrees Celsius is equal to all right, KB which was 0 0.51 degrees Celsius per molar times. Now we do know the mass of water which is the solvent, which is 0 0.150 kilograms. We don't know this. So what we want to do is we want to solve for the moles of glucose, which is X here. So this would be moles of glucose. Now, to do that, we're going to multiply 0 0.15 by 0 0.34 and then divide it by 0 0.51. So in this case, X is going to be equal to 0 0.10 moles of glucose. So we do know that our mass of glucose was 18 grams. And we want to figure out the molar mass of glucose. So uh, remember, molar mass is just mass divided by moles. The mass here was uh, 18 grams. We're going to divide that by the 0 0.10 moles. And we will get 180 grams per mole for the glucose molecule. Now, glucose is C6H12O6. We can check ourselves with this. So C6H12O6. And yes, that is 180 grams grams per mole and so we can see that that works out nicely with the information that was provided to us so just a good example of, of what we could what else we can do with the uh, the the collider properties of boiling point and freezing point depression so again boiling point elevation versus freezing point depression they're pretty much the same Equation, just the difference is case of B and case of F. Okay, so we were talking about hydrophilic and hydrophobic here. Hydrophilic is just, it just means water loving and hydrophobic means water fearing. And, you know, it depends on the structure. So we're going to look at one that's very common, uh, sodium stearate. And you see this in biological systems. We have up on top here, we see that it has a polar head. And then you see the nonpolar tail here. 
the nonpolar keeps water out, but then the, the polar head is what allows it to dissolve into water. Uh, we know that with a cell membrane, we have what is called the lipid bilayer. And so if I draw the cell membrane to, so the it looks like this here because it has the hydrophobic tail and hydrophilic head and that keeps water on the outside and does not allow it to travel through. Now the only way for it to travel through is that you, you have to have a protein that allows the traveling of the water across the membrane and this is going back to the osmosis that we just discussed in the colligative properties slides. So, But uh, that's the end of the video. We're going to stop it here. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, just let me know. Thanks.